Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 2023 annual block party at Bellevue Heights Church. Uh, what do you want for Christmas? Do you want peace on earth, goodwill towards men, a candied apple, or a brand new friend? Have you made it your list? Have you sent it in? Have you been a good boy or been living in sin? That's how I'm opening my sermon this week at Bellevue Heights. Uh, I'm the pastor here, and we want to invite you to come back and worship with us. If you don't have a church home in Sun City, we'd love for you to come with us. We're a Bible teaching church. We go by verse by verse through the Bible. And we, if I can be a little bit prejudiced, I think we got the best church around, a friendly church, and, and we love this. And this is one of the highlights of our year. We've got so many volunteers who have put this on today, have worked tirelessly to make it all possible, and we're running a little bit fatigued about now. But folks, we got a great ending here. If you haven't been already, outside we have a living nativity, we have a Heading zoo. We've got cookies and chocolate and cookies and cookies and cookies and cookies. And so lots of people out there. Uh, we'd love for you to get to meet us and ask any questions. A lot of information about our church out there. But we would encourage you. We have three services every weekend. Saturday at 5 o'clock is a contemporary service. Sunday at 9 and 1030 is our traditional service. Christmas Eve, we have three services at 10 I think 4.30 and 6. I'm not sure. And so, but we so, hope you'll come to one of those, and uh, we'd love to meet you. Uh, Heidi Hernandez and Harp Synergy are going to share with us, but we want to have a prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, we want to lift up the Christ of Christmas because we have a lot of fun here, but the reason for the season is your son Jesus because Jesus is the one and the only one who can give us eternal life so my hope and prayer is that as we look around and see the lights and the trees the cookies and the cocoa we will realize that the greatest gift is not found under a tree it was found in a manger in Bethlehem may we worship that baby as the son of God the Savior of the world. And it is in his holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming to join us. Um, I wanted to start at the start with O Come, O Come, Emmanuel as a prayer, because, you know, I was thinking as I was driving here today how, what a great joy it is to do a concert, not to be worshipped, but to worship, to, to lift high the name of he whose birth we celebrate, which I can't think of a more joyous occasion. Here we all are dressed as the angel choir. <laughs> um, so I don't know if you guys, when you hear those carols that we just played, don't the words just ring through your head? Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness, light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. I mean, how great is this? Now this next song that we're going to play for you all is called Carol of the Stars, and I highly doubt the words are going to go through your head because it's a very obscure carol, so you probably won't know them. If you do, sing them with us. <laughs> If I hear singing, I'm going to like run out with the microphone. But we're going to sing them for you. This is Carol of the Stars. It was arranged by one of the students who was with us last night for that concert, but not with us tonight, um, Kathy from Tucson. But we hope that you um, let your hearts sing this with us. We thought it was far too beautiful um, for you guys to pass up, so we had to sing you the words. The next song we're going to play for you, you probably know the words to, too. It is um, Let It Go from Frozen. I know, it's a little, it's a diverse program tonight, kids. So you can sing this, too, if you want to be out there. My daughter promised she was going to sing it tonight, so we'll see what happens. Oh, I get to introduce them now. Uh-huh. This is how I cue myself. Okay, 
here we go. I get to introduce you to these wonderful, wonderful students, and I'm going to come out from around here so I don't mess this up. Okay, we are going to start on this end. You get to stand up and smile. This is what they live for. I once asked if, like, they could introduce themselves, and they're all like, no. So now I get to say whatever I want. No. This is Miss Casey. She is very new to the studio, but not terribly new to the harp. She's played for a couple years. Yes. And only been my student for this semester, so this is her first big concert with us. So give her a big round of applause. Next to her is a set of sisters. This is Kelsey and Alyssa. They, yes, you get to stand up together, yes. They are from Tucson, and they are actually the students of my former student, and sometimes a coaching or two here or there. Um, also from Tucson, uh, Danielle Eliason has her master's from the University of Arizona, teaches these young ladies, so they all came up from Tucson to join us tonight. So give them a rousing round of applause. Next is Dr. Barbara Keske. Um, last year she had a broken foot and played a different kind of harp. This year she had a shoulder replacement, but she's completely fine. You guys, they don't make them like they used to. <laughs> That's all I can say. There is nothing that keeps her down. She makes every single concert unless there is truly some kind of huge extenuating circumstance. She lives here in Phoenix and has studied for seven years. Please give her a round of applause. Next is Miss Hannah Mack. She studied with me all through high school, and then she went down to the University of Arizona where she just completed her first semester as a freshman. We're so excited she's back with us. Next is Miss Holly Champy, a budding professional here in the Phoenix area. Also, she has studied with me for, what, like five, six years? Seems eternal, it's been so beautiful. And um, yeah, Holly, Holly plays, Holly's a writer. She works at the Boyer Bakery, and I'm so happy that she's here with us tonight. Next to her is Miss Abby Lee. Abby also studied with me in high school and then went away to college in Virginia. And she's back on Christmas break, too. Um, she is halfway through her sophomore year where she's an environmental science major. So we're awfully happy to have her back also. Next to her is Miss Elena Macias. She is 10 years old. She has played the harp for four years, and she is the youngest student I've ever had who moved up to pedal harp at this young age, so she's tearing it up. So please give her a round of applause, too. <laughs> Next to her is Miss Elena Hernandez. She wanted to play the harp from when she was itty-bitty, and I don't know why. <laughs> um, she has been surrounded by harps. I have a picture of her at six weeks laying on a harp. She is a wonderful little musician in her own right, and I'm awfully happy to be joined by my daughter on stage. So give her a little round. And last night I didn't introduce myself, and someone came up afterwards and said they were from Texas and didn't know who I was. So. Tonight I'm actually going to, it made an impression. My name is Heidi Hernandez. I did all of my graduate work at the University of Arizona. I got my master's and my doctorate there and uh, met my husband there. And we now live on the west side of Phoenix in Litchfield Park. We have four children who some of you may know. They are vibrant if you've seen them here. Um, our oldest is 12, our second is nine, and then Elena has a twin brother and they are both six. So I have so much fun working with all of these amazing, amazing women. They're not only incredible musicians, but they're also incredible people with hearts of gold. So um, thank you for hearing us tonight as Harp Synergy.
The next um, group of pieces we're going to play for you all is we're going to play Infant Holy. And what child is this also known as? Green Sleeves. Yes, very good. An educated audience. I love you. And then we're going to take a breath and go into Away in a Manger.
Okay, so this next um, selection we're going to play for you all is a little off the beaten path. So each year I try to do something to really stretch the students. It's kind of fun for me because, you know, you guys know life is full of challenges, right? So if you don't get used to them, then you won't know what to happen when you get random music thrown at you or someone says to you, you know, how about you do this? Like, for instance, I was telling my student today I was headed to play a birthday party on the harp because I'm a harpist. And <laughs> the lady texts me that day and she says, hey, can you play the piano too? And I was like, I mean, I can. I don't know that you want me to. I said to her, you know, don't you think the harp would be nice? And she's like, oh, I'm going to love the harp, but I really want you to play the piano, too. And I told my husband, if you all know my husband, he's the director of music at Grand Canyon University, a very practical man. He said, tell her no. <laughs> Thanks, honey. I said, no, honey, you don't tell people no at a gig unless it's something very dangerous or immoral. You just you know, you make something up and you make it work. So I was like, no, I'm not going to tell her no. I'm going to come. So I dug out somewhere out there, like my favorite piano song to play from when I was 10, <laughs> which is some time ago. <laughs> yeah. And so I took it and I, I kept thinking, I mean, I played, my, I played my fingers off at this gig because I thought maybe if I make the harp sound good enough, they won't ask me to play the piano. So I'm just like ripping the strings out and here comes her husband and he's like, so can we hear you play the piano soon? And I'm like, I just started laughing. I said, so here's the deal. I played when I was eight for two years, and then he started laughing. And I said, there was one year in undergrad, but I don't know. And he said, well, if you're not comfortable, and I was like, no, I can do this. So I did. I went over, and I started playing the piano, and I heard nothing. It was electric. You had to turn it on. <laughs> so like, do you just want me to mime this thing or what? So then I figured out how to turn it on, and it's like volume, and I'm like, I don't know, quiet enough that not many people can hear it. So I turn on the piano, and I pick a volume, which, praise the Lord, was not that loud. And so I'm playing, and I really had a great time. It was funny. It's actually quite relaxing. No offense, Janelle. But like, it's, it's like your hands are down here instead of up here, and I was having a great time. I was going all Dino Kartsanakis on it, and then they were like, okay, that's enough. Go back to our Okay, so I got ready to leave, and I said to the lady, I said, why did you want me to play the piano? And she said, oh, it's brand new. You're the first person who's ever played it. And then I was glad that I was completely impractical and broke it in on somewhere out there. And she had bought it. It was her birthday gift, and it was going to be for her to take lessons. But I got to break in the piano. I know, isn't that sweet? So I say that all to say my students love the stories. They come to harp camp just for the food and the stories. <laughs> but all that to say, I try to keep them on their toes. And so every year, there's always some mistake I make while teaching someone that becomes a full-blown song. So this year, it was We Three Kings. And my original idea was to have my three sons, like, solemnly parading around in costume. And if you guys know my three sons, it would have been like the Three Stooges. And I started realizing this isn't going to go well. So then we were already learning the song, and I was telling my student, you know, when you play the bass, like, don't slap it, or it'll sound like jazz. And then I realized, wait, maybe we want it to sound like jazz. Maybe we want to swing it. So we dubbed it Swingin' Kings. And here you go.
that kind of fun? Won't you never hear it again the same way? I know, that's also a goal. So, did you guys hear the jazz, the jazz that I put in it? What was it? Yes, it was take five. Way to go. So when we were in graduate school, when we were in graduate school, we played take five as a group, and our teacher, Lord bless her and rest her soul, she was epic. She was truly like a comet. She, she was incredible, although she didn't have a sparkle dress, but she would have loved this dress. Um, she would always take this solo in the middle of take five that sounded just like We Three Kings. So I thought it was fitting to do the opposite, <laughs> and kind of an homage and such a fun thing. This next piece is very different. This is In the Bleak Midwinter. How many of you know the words to this? One person. Good. Would you like to tell them to us? I don't know. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful carol, kind of a hymn. It's, it talks about in the bleak midwinter, frosty mind, wind made moan, and, in, and it goes on in the bleak midwinter, snow on snow on snow. So how many of you have ever lived in a place that had snow on snow on snow? Oh, all of you. You guys are so smart. You moved out here. <laughs> I understand. I did too. So the first year my husband and I were married, we lived in northern Kansas. I know. <laughs> you guys are from northern Kansas. Boy, it is cold. I didn't think it would be that bad, and I was so wrong. Oh my goodness. We moved in in December and we moved out in December. Is this a good idea? No, this is a horrible idea. So there was snow on snow on snow, and I was out moving the harp in 17 degree below weather, and there were just mounds, and we actually lived in the basement, so I had to go through the backyard, and it was just snow. It was incredible, but what I loved was the quiet. You know when you come out, and it has just snowed, and it's just as still and peaceful as it can possibly be. It's like the purest peace. I was reading that the snowflakes actually trap ambient sound in between them. So it's not just that it's quiet because like no one can travel, it's that they actually take the atmospheric sound and absorb it. And so it's just still. So when we got ready to play this piece, I told the students, okay, I want this to feel to you all like walking out in the morning on freshly fallen snow where you hear almost nothing, where it's quiet and still and peaceful. So please consider this your gift of snow this Christmas.
Do you guys know how hard that is? You know, they always say the sign of a good ensemble is if they can play quietly. I am so proud of you guys. Okay, that was my moment. Yeah, I think they deserve another round. I get to clap this time. It's so beautiful. Okay, now we're going to bring you gently back with Oh Holy Night.
Before we play this last selection for you, I want to just thank you all so much for coming and spending your evening with us. I hope you got to partake of the absolutely incredible party out there. I want to say a huge thank you to Bellevue Heights Church for putting this all on and for having us here. So thank you guys so much. I also want to take just a minute to thank the parents and spouses and all of the helpers. It takes a village to move harps, move children, drive for hours. And so I just want to say thank you so much to the support system of all of us. So please say thank you with me to these incredible helpers. We are going to leave you uh, with a piece called World of Dreams. Oh, I guess I should mention that. There are CDs in the lobby. If you just can't get enough harp music, take some home with you. Um, there's an album called World of Dreams that this song is on. I recorded it um, when our oldest was very little because he thought he didn't need to sleep anymore when he was like nine months old and I almost didn't survive. So I realized I play the harp. I should be able to knock this kid out, <laughs> right? So I did, I recorded this album, it's super duper quiet, and it worked, and he has slept ever since. Actually quite well, I'm not kidding, it's amazing. So that's World of Dreams. And then in 2020, when there was almost nothing to do, except we played here, and we were so grateful. But the only other thing I did that Christmas was record this album called Holiest Night. It's all Christmas music. If it has O Come, O Come Emmanuel on it that I um, played for you all tonight, and it has a little bit of this next part that we're going to play for you also. So those are in the lobby. They're $20, should you wish to take some home. But mainly, thank you so much for being with us. Merry Christmas, you guys. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we thank Harden, Harp Synergy for, and Heidi Hernandez for such a wonderful, wonderful evening. Now, if you'd like to top off your evening with a Christmas cookie and a cocoa, <laughs> the kitchen is open for a few more minutes just for you. Merry Christmas.